What's up? I'm here today to talk about the pros and cons of living in the United States of America. What people here refer to as the greatest country on earth, God's country. And this is my perspective as someone who has been living abroad for the past six years. Since 2019, traveling around the world, mostly living in Vietnam as an English teacher, and now coming back to be here in the United States of America for a few months, visiting my friends and family during the summer. Let's get into it. So on my notes here, I have an overwhelmingly amount of cons compared to pros for living in the United States of America. So let's go ahead and start ripping into it. First con is the food system, the food in America. All right. Now the grocery stores and the restaurants here in the US, I like to call drug dealers because they are filled with 99% um, ultra processed, highly refined, highly addictive foods, right? Foods filled with sugar, salt, oil, and all other kinds of chemicals that make these foods highly addictive. You walk into a supermarket in America and what do you see? Rows and rows and aisles of candy, cookies, chips, cereals, frozen processed foods, basically all trash, all stuff that is really shouldn't even be considered food. But unfortunately, this is what Americans are eating. And that's why you also look around in a grocery store in America and it feels like 50% or more of the people in the store are overweight overweight families with overweight children, mothers, grandmothers, fathers, and even obese. Some people that really look to be at a weight where it's getting severely unhealthy. And unfortunately, this kind of lifestyle gets passed down to the kids and keeps going generation to generation. And it just remains a health problem in the family. It's not good. Now you can find fruits and vegetables in a grocery store in the US. You just have to look a bit hard because this is the smallest section in the grocery store, but you can find fruits and vegetables and other non-processed foods. But if you want to get organic, of course, this is going to be at a very high price point, very expensive to get organic produce. So you will have to settle for inorganic produce, which is, you know, often sprayed with chemicals like Roundup, which have been, you know, shown to cause diseases, lead to cancer. Um, so it's really just hard to, to find like a, like a good quality meals and good quality produce in the US. I think your best option is to, um, to go to like a farmer's market, which you're gonna be paying a little bit more of a premium, but this is where you're gonna get the healthiest food in the US. Restaurants. I mean, it's so funny that it's not funny, but it is funny. Basically, everywhere you go in America, no matter where you are, the biggest city or the smallest town, there's going to be a McDonald's, you know, KFC, Burger King, Popeye's, Chipotle, just any street you go, it's just it's just filled with fast food. The fast food chains have just got a monopoly in the US and they've just bought up, you know, all the real estate so I can tell you, you know, in any direction of my house within a kilometer, you know, I could tell you a McDonald's this way, a McDonald's that way, a McDonald's that way, a McDonald's that way. I mean, how can we, how can we win, right? How can the people thrive and live a healthy life when we're just surrounded by these super addictive um, drugs, these super addictive foods? Um, you know, they're not even foods, they're drugs. And so, yeah, it's really, the odds are stacked against the American people. We've, we've fell into the trap of, um, of fast food and processed foods, and now they've really got us right where they want us. And it seems like the system, the cities in the U.S. are really designed for people to eat all of that trash food. And then once they reach the age of 40, 50 years old, 60 years old, then people start developing all these health problems and then they switch over and they have to start relying on the health system. All right, this is point number two. Con number two 
is the medical and healthcare system in the United States, right? Nothing is free. Absolutely nothing is free. Not, not a consultation, not a, not a checkup, not an ambulance ride. I mean, that's going to cost, what, one or $2,000 to ride five minutes in an ambulance. God forbid you ever have to get picked up in a helicopter while you're hiking or something. So, yeah, like I said, I believe that the, uh, the food system, fast food, and uh, the medical system are kind of collaborating to where they want you to eat all this food, all this Pepsi, Coca-Cola, and then when you get sick, they just you get sent you know to the medical system and then you got to start paying the doctors start paying for pills start paying for shots and surgeries and all this stuff and this crap is super expensive and what the medical system does in america is it doesn't really fix the root cause of any problem it doesn't fix the root cause of your cancer or your uh whatever some other disease there's so many your plantar fasciitis in your foot right you got foot problems it's not going to get fixed what the doctor's gonna do is they're just gonna give you some drugs and say, this is gonna make you feel better, but the problem itself is not gonna get fixed. Compared to Eastern medicine, Asian medicine, where they've been doing whatever they've been doing over their acupuncture and taking different herbs and doing different natural remedies that have been working for thousands of years. And unfortunately, the medical and the healthcare system in the US basically just it's all about taking pills and, um, again, more drug dealers. The doctors are, to some extent, not all doctors, but a lot of doctors in the U.S. are just drug dealers. And that's not good. So that seems like a good segue into number three, which is that everything is so fucking expensive, right? I mean, compared to when I was living in Vietnam, you know, I was getting a nice apartment in Vietnam for two hundred dollars or less you know that's the, that's the that's the most i ever paid was around two hundred dollars but normally around 150 175 dollars one bedroom a uh, private bathroom you know ac everything was fine you want an apartment here you know where i'm where i'm staying in louisville kentucky you know it's gonna be you know pr prior around nine hundred dollars for for a one person you know and the the more beds you need the the higher that's going to go so nine hundred dollars thousand dollars you know not only that but people also have to pay for you got to pay for your car cars are expensive uh gas is expensive car insurance health insurance dental insurance all these different kinds of insurances you got to pay taxes um so it all just adds up. Food is expensive. Like I said, fast food is the cheapest, but if you eat that, you're gonna die. If you wanna eat at a nice restaurant, you know, you're talking $20 a meal, at least. And that's before the tip. And uh, tipping is a big culture in the US. You're kind of looked at as, a, as an asshole if you don't leave a generous tip. So eating, living, everything is just expensive in the United States, which means People basically are just spending all their money to survive and they can never really save money to be able to like travel or, you know, take a trip somewhere in the U.S. or outside of the U.S. Um, people kind of just become slaves to the system. And yeah, it's because everything is so expensive and yeah, it's just, it's just messed up. Con number four, politics. Oh man. The two-party system in the United States is uh, trash. It's trash. It's not working. It's never really worked. Um, yeah, we basically just have these like two major parties, Democrat and Republican, and we basically just like yo-yo back and forth. You know, but Clinton to Bush, Bush to Obama, Obama to Trump, Trump to Biden. We don't know what it's going to be next time. Probably some fucking alien or something. I don't know. But um, yeah, the two-party system, it's just, it's outdated. And uh, we always somehow end up having our nominees be, you know, people that are like 80 years old, which just doesn't make any sense to me at all. Like, why would, why would these be the best people for the job? They're obviously not. They're just puppets for whoever is behind them. Um, and what the political system does in the United States of America is it divides the people pulls them in this direction and pulls the other people in this direction and everything just gets so polarized and then family friends people that were so close at one point get divided because of politics 
and it's like this person's opinion and this person's opinion is so strong now they're not even friends and they don't even talk to each other family it's getting torn apart just because somebody wants to vote for trump somebody wants to vote for biden it's just insane i think it's just delusional and i don't get it i've i've never really been much into politics um but yeah basically it just creates a lot of divide and it creates a lot of tension uh within the country itself and then we can't come together and we can't rise up and say hey why are our supermarkets filled with trash why are there so many homeless people on the street why do we have all these problems no that's the whole point of the system right they want to keep us fighting like this so that way we can't come together and start asking the real questions they just want to keep us distracted and um they're doing a great job the people at the top yeah they're doing a, they're doing a fucking great job but uh it sucks for the for the american public it really sucks all right con number five wow so many cons i'm sorry america i'll 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 do some pros at the end i promise uh safety so like like I said, I've traveled, um, traveled in Europe, traveled in Mexico, traveled and lived all over Asia. And I've pretty much felt safe, you know, almost everywhere I've been in the world. It's just when I come back to America is when sometimes I feel a little bit uh, suspicious, you know. About 10 or 15 years ago, when I was a kid running around on the streets with my friends, getting into random shenanigans, um, I felt very safe. I felt... I felt fine or maybe it was just a lack of awareness about like the real world because you know I was just a, a teenager and um but yeah I felt I felt safe and over the last 10 years and especially since um the pandemic violence and crime has increased uh dramatically here in the United States of America pretty much in every city across the board um some places getting devoured like uh, Portland Oregon San Francisco, California, um, you know, Chicago, Detroit, I'm sure these places have a higher, a lot higher crime rates as well. But yeah, you know, there's more car theft, more just theft in general, more shootings, um, you know, shootings among gangs, shooting amongst random people, school shootings, um, you know, people always see that on the news in America and they're like, wow, this is crazy. And it is crazy. And I don't know how this is still happening. You know, there's there's no gun reform. They're still allowing, you know, young 18 year olds to buy rifles. Uh, it's, it's fucking insane that there's like, not, not like a, a mental health check or, or something that happens before you buy a assault weapon. But um, anyway, yeah, just safety is, is kind of a concern. And you know, I don't, yeah, it's just as the, as the years have gone on, I've just, I've began to felt less safe. Um, even in the areas that I used to be when I was younger. Yeah, I just, you know, I see a lot more homeless people and drug addicts walking around, more sketchy characters walking around. And, you know, I just kind of feel weird and it makes me, you know, look over my shoulder more. Um, so yeah, I feel, I feel like safety is a bit of a concern in the United States. There's so many people have guns and uh, people are just, people are just unpredictable. And the mental health is so all over the place that, yeah, it's hard to feel safe sometimes. And so that gets me into my next con, which is the drug and homelessness problem. And I don't mean to like put these together. You know, I know that not all drug addicts are homeless and not all homeless people are drug addicts. But it seems that the majority of homeless people that I've encountered are drug addicts. Um, whether that means, you know, they got on the drug and then they became homeless or they became homeless and then they got on drugs. It just seems the more majority of homeless people are on drugs. And this is a problem. Having homeless people is a problem first for the people themselves. You know, they don't deserve to be homeless. They don't deserve to be living out on the streets, you know, in the summer, in the winter, when it's cold. Um, you know, people die, people freeze to death on the streets because they don't have a home. We have, we have enough housing. We have abandoned houses. We have abandoned buildings. We have places that are not being used, places that could be, you know, funded and created as like homeless shelters or treatment centers or something like we have, we have the housing, but 
whatever. The people at the top don't want to share their property with the homeless people. I don't know. But yeah, the problems go deep. You know, the problems go deep into like mental health issues. It goes deep into people's traumas. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a complicated issue. But there, it, it just seems like there's not much being done about it as there could be. Um, you know, in the city that I live, Louisville, Kentucky, over the years, especially since the pandemic, uh, just like with violence, uh, the number of homeless people has also increased. The number of drug using and drug drugs, drug users, I don't know the number, but the number of drugs on the street has increased. And yeah, there's just a lot of people on the streets walking around using heroin, using meth and uh, fentanyl, people dying, people overdosing every day. And then people just doing crazy shit, you know, homeless people killing other homeless people. It's just like, it's fucking wild out there. And um, yeah, I feel bad for them. Um, and yeah, it sucks for, for also, you know, people that have kids trying to go to school and there's, you know, somebody shooting a heroin right there on the sidewalk, you know, it's just, it's not a great look. And, um, yeah, a lot, a lot more needs to be done, uh, about the homelessness and drug crisis, you know, more funding needs to be going into programs and, uh, yeah, the government needs to, needs to help set that up. All right, we're almost done with the cons here, but uh, the last con that I will say about living in the US is the young people, the people my age, all right? This one's more, more personal for me, right? Um, it, it seems like it's harder for me to meet people than it used to be. Um, it seems like a lot of people my age, like mid twenties, basically just like the party, they like to drink, they like to, you know, smoke weed, um, Oh, sorry, I used to do all these things, but I don't. Um, I let go of all that stuff. Uh, you know, I like to, I like to go hiking. I like to spend time in nature. I like to, you know, play different sports, play board games, um, have these kind of, you know, interesting conversations with people. I love to travel, of course. Um, and it seems just like difficult to find communities for these things. You know, I've searched on Facebook. And online trying to find like a group of people that like to hike um, or people that like to play board games uh, just things like this and I haven't really found anything yet I just see the majority of people my age just going out to the clubs going out to the bars um, and this is lame like this I just think it's lame like it's so easy to connect with people when you're out you know traveling around you know uh, meeting people in your in your hostel or just uh, if I'm living, you know, in Vietnam and just meeting people that also live there. And it's just really easy to connect with people that are like-minded and go on some adventure together or uh, organize some events, organize some community. I don't know what I'm trying to say, but yeah, it just feels like there's like a difference in in preference and like a difference in, in mindset uh, of me and a lot of the young people in the United States. But that's okay. It is what it is. All right. So we've been absolutely beating and battering and roasting the United States of America. And yeah, it's got its problems, but so does every country. And just like cons, you know, America also comes with its pros. And the first one obviously being freedom of speech and freedom of religion. Now I've traveled to some places in the Middle East, um, Northern Africa, even Southeast Asia, where they are not allowed to speak badly about, you know, certain past historical figures. They're not allowed to talk about the government. They're not allowed to talk about the police. They're not allowed to talk about the military. Um, and that's crazy. Like, that's really crazy to me, being someone that was born and raised in the United States of America, where we've always felt free. I've always felt free to be able to criticize, uh, you know, the president or the police or the military or my teacher or anyone, right? That's just the culture here. Like this country was founded on the principles of freedom of speech and freedom to pursue whatever religion you want. And yeah, that's a huge deal. And I think even a lot of people in 
the United States don't really know how good we have it in that sense. Um, you know, so many countries in the world, they can't choose their religion. You know, you're going to be killed. You're going to be you're going to be sent to jail or you're going to be killed if you try to pursue another religion. You're going to go to jail and you're or you're going to be killed if you try to talk badly about the leader. That's absolutely insane. And I wish that every country had the same philosophy um, as the freedom of speech that we have in the United States. So I'm definitely very grateful for freedom of speech and freedom of religion here in the United States. Second one, it's kind of random, but a, a pro of the United States, at least where I'm from in, uh, in Kentucky, is that the air quality is very clean. And living in Southeast Asia for many years, you can ask anyone <laughs> that's also lived in Southeast Asia, they will tell you the air quality is not that great. You know, I've, I've mostly been living in Vietnam and you know, everyone's driving motorbikes. They're just really not conscious about like the quality of the air there. They just kind of do whatever. And it can get really polluted. Also in Southeast Asian countries, they often burn plastic, burn trash, uh, burn crops. So there's a lot of ways that the air can get really dirty and polluted um, with smoke and burning fumes and stuff. Here in the US, you know, there's a lot of regulations, especially in states like California, about the air quality and, you know, what kind of cars you're allowed to drive, what kind of oil you're allowed to use. And in general, I just remember coming back from Vietnam and arriving here and just feeling like, wow, the air is uh, it's very fresh very clean it also gets colder here which i feel kind of like filters and crisps up the air so yeah clean fresh air not a lot of uh garbage on the ground compared to places you know like indonesia vietnam india you know the there's not a lot of litter on the ground in the u.s so it's just kind of clean and the air quality is clean and i appreciate that all right and the third con i'll give to the u.s is the way people express love. This sounds kind of corny, but something just as simple as getting a hug, I really appreciate. When I live in Vietnam, the only other people that I'm really giving a hug to is maybe other foreigner friends that I'm really close with, people that I consider like family. But besides that, you know, Vietnamese people, it's not really their style to hug. They're more of a handshake kind of culture, even in their own families. That's just not the way that they express love. They don't really hug their children. Um, and this is very common in Asian culture for to just not express love in the form of like hugging and kissing to other people, unless it's like your wife or husband. Um, so yeah, just, it's just a weird thing in Asia where they just don't really hug. And I kind of miss that, you know, just kind of like a human connection on an intimacy level. So coming back here and, you know, just my family, my friends, even my bros, you know, we hug it out, man. We just, ah, oh, just hug it out. And that's just, that's just what we do. And it just feels good, man. Hugs just feel good. And I think every country in the world should just embrace hugging each other. Um, yeah. I just think we should be we should we should just be hugging each other as as uh, as humans. Just give more hugs. Yeah. All right. That's it. Those are my pros and cons about living in the United States of America after being abroad for six years. There's a lot of other things I could have said related to cons and related to pros, but this is just what I had written down. If you can think of anything pros or cons about living in the United States, I'm curious to hear what you think. So comment down below anything that you think I missed or anything that you feel from your own perspective. All right, y'all. I appreciate you watching this. Thanks a lot. Um, really smash that like button if you can. It's not a lot of work. Just one click. It really uh, helps to boost my channel. And um, yeah, subscribe if you want to see more stuff like this. Or, you know, I do a lot of different kind of stuff. So, um, yeah. Appreciate you watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.